Hi folks, this is Jason Moore here with MTGOacademy.com. I would like to welcome you to the latest installment of Demir Teachings is the deck we're going to be playing today. You've probably seen me write about it and talk about it extensively in the past. It's lost a bit of popularity as the Peregrine Drake Scourge sweeps the popper format, but we're going to play it anyway. I don't really care about all that nonsense anyway, uh, and I just feel like playing it, so I'm going to do it. Mystical Teachings is a blue-black control deck that derives a lot of its power from this card right here. This is a four-mana instant with flashback that allows us to tutor up any instant or creature with flash from our library and that allows us to have a lot of consistency and a lot of interaction with the opponent. Three copies historically has proven to be correct. Four is a little bit clunky as it can flood your hand with four, four mana cards and that can be very detrimental early on in the game. The fact that it has flashback is very relevant and you'll notice that one of the primary sequences that I recommend with teachings is to teachings up a counter spell and then flashback the teachings to get your next teachings with that teachings you f you teachings up a counter spell and you flashback the teachings to get your final teachings then you get wait for it a counter spell and you flashback that teachings to get uh, whatever serves you at the time if you want to get something like accumulated knowledge to draw three cards or crypt incursion to gain 30 life you certainly can now this is just a, a guideline sometimes you're gonna to want to get a diabolic edict or doom blade to kill a creature a disfigure or something or you might want to get crypt incursion right away because your opponent is doing something cheeky with their graveyard and you need to disrupt them. But I'm getting a little ahead of, ahead of myself. Let's break everything down into the basic stage one, stage two, stage three. Our stage one involves killing a bunch of creatures and setting up our future draws. So the way we do that, we have a number of one mana removal spells. We have two copies of Disfigure, tutorable with teachings, one copy of Deadweight, which I like because it's not completely blank against big creatures. It still shrinks them down, and it can kill a Tog with uh, no questions asked. It can kill anything that has a temporary pump effect because it provides a permanent toughness reduction. One mana Tragic Slip. Morbid gets turned on very frequently in this deck, so this, this card is very useful, I find, especially because it doesn't have any sort of non-black or non-artifact creature clause that you have to worry about. It's just target creature. We're also going to kill things early with Chainer's Edict, uh, a very important removal spell in this format. This getting printed, I think, had a bigger impact than most people recognize. I mean, it really helped Mono Black Control get a lot better, and this deck, Demir Teachings, get a lot better. It has flashback, so it gives us a little bit more staying power in the late game, and it gets around all types of protection and hexproof contingencies. Diabolic Edicts early will also keep us alive, in addition to the aforementioned Counterspell. So the early type of card draw we do is related to Preordain, one of my favorite cards in the format. You'll be hard pressed to see me play a blue deck without this card. And then we'll have some early accumulated knowledges. And the newer card I'm playing is Knight's Whisper. I got two copies here. So our full draw suite is four Preordain, four accumulated knowledge, two Knight's Whisper, and three Mystical Teachings. It's, it's a nice uh, little suite, but not necessarily perfect. I I might in fact want to change a few things or add some more draw. So as far as building advantages go in stage two, we have the subsequent copies of accumulated knowledge. We have pristine talisman, which is going to ramp us and gain us some life. We've got mystical teachings and Evan Carr's justice to sweep the board. And then our end game involves all of these components as well. But you also throw in Curse of the Bloody Tome, which is our win condition in this deck, to mill the opponent out, 
crypt incursion to set our life total just skyrocketing out of reach and uh, that's pretty much it like I said you follow that teaching sequence to just continue to get counter spells and you ultimately lock the opponent out of the game an alternate win condition is to have these two pristine talismans in play and you repeatedly cast Evancar's Justice with buyback so this card never leaves our hand and we're just burning the opponent for two and sweeping the board every single turn the mana base is a lot of dual lands we got four Demir Guildgate, four Backwater and Evolving Wilds, a Terramorphic Expanse and just one Demir Aqueduct. Some people go insane with the Aqueducts. They play three or four so that they can bounce as much as they want. Personally, I'm not in love with these Karoo lands, and I don't know that I ever have been, especially because we're playing a Counterspell deck. If you play Dismal Backwater, you get a turn two Counterspell. You get a turn three Counterspell if you want it. If you play a bunch of Demir Aqueducts, a lot of the times your turn two is play Demir Aqueduct, or your turn three is play Demir Aqueduct, and it keeps you from having two untapped blue lands in play to counter their early turns. And that can be very crucial in this type of deck. Anyway, we also have, what, three seven islands and three swamps. So I believe that brings us to 18 blue sources and 14 black. And then we have two copies of Radiant Fountain. Obviously, you can bounce this to your hand with Aqueduct or with Deprive. All right, let's go to the sideboard. Sideboard is uh, not too different from what I've played in the past. A few changes. Uh, in general, I feel like Doomblade has gotten more viable. There's a lot less mono black control in the format, and there's a lot more need to kill guys at instant speed. A lot of the decks have gotten faster to try and fight Peregrine Drake, and then killing Peregrine Drake at instant speed is also pretty useful. So against creature decks like any type of aggro deck or affinity we want to bring in vendetta and doom blade and then again if the decks are swarm de swarm strategies we want to bring in the third evan cars justice as well and this also go comes in against hexproof hydro blast comes in against any aggressive red deck it comes in against nivix cyclops it comes in in probably just two copies against affinity it's very strong against a tog uh, obviously against burn as well we go up to seven eight nine ten counter spells against burn pretty important speaking of burn we bring in spreading seas against them to slow down the amount of burn spells they can cast per turn we bring it in against hexproof and against tron strategies and against a lot of those similar strategies decks that we need to kill quickly we'll, we'll, we will also board into gurmog angler and that guy can gum up the ground Obviously, if they're playing 4-4s four like in an affinity deck, this is something that you would really be interested in having on your side. And then against decks like Burn and Hexproof, you need to establish a fast clock so that what after you disrupt them, you give them absolutely no time to recover and, uh, and re-up their, their strategy. You want to just clock them as fast as possible. The only other things to talk about, Fairy Macabre. I just have four of these in most of my sideboards now. I don't actually know if <laughs> that's correct or smart. Uh, and I really haven't been running into much Peregrine Drake, but the idea is that it's an uncounterable way to remove all the ghostly flickers from their graveyard slash deck. I don't know if it's that viable, but they're in the sideboard and we'll see what happens. And then the last card is Capsize, another buyback spell similar to Evan Carr's Justice in that sense. But this one lets you bounce permanence to its owner's hand. So you can do things like bounce your own permanence, but we don't really do that in this deck too much. I mean, we could start bouncing Radiant Fountains. But the main thing I think we want to use this against is decks with Tron lands and with Karoo lands. And we can systematically break down their mana base. If we get enough lands in play we can do this twice a turn and that'll eventually allow you to bounce more lands than they can play per turn so that you're eventually dwindling them down to one land every turn uh, it's kind of an alternate win condition it's very slow very clunky so it's not the most reliable thing and it's not something i really want in the main deck for those reasons as well but we've got it in the sideboard we'll see if it 
has any relevance in these matches at all. And that is it. Demir Teachings, one of my favorite decks to play in the format, I would say. I mean, pretty much any blue control deck is something I'm interested in playing. Uh, but this is one that's kind of got a special place in me hot because I've written some uh, what I would consider very cool and enjoyable articles about it and I learned a lot of things about Popper by building teachings. I'm not saying that the Curse of the Bloody Tome version is my favorite. It's definitely one of the most viable, probably the most viable version of teachings because it blanks so much creature removal from the opponent and really nobody has consistent enchantment hate game one. So that that's a good thing about it. But we're just going to jump into the matches and you guys can see how things pan out. I hope you enjoy the battles. They're going to be very uh, hotly contested. A lot of creature kill and counter spells going on. And hopefully we can tutor up some cool instants every once in a while. Alright guys, thank you very much and I hope you enjoy. Hi folks, welcome to the first round of Classic Popper League action. We're playing Demir Teachings. We're on the draw. We kept our hand. We're going to fix our colors first. We don't know what we want with Preordain. We don't know what the opponent is. So we're going to wait a little bit, but we've got a good hand. And let's see what comes out here. Green. So he's green X, green blue, green black. Green black, the most annoying ever. This this is the most annoying, but as we can see here, he might not be tortured existence. Probably is. He kept Sultai Scavenger, huh? So Draggers in the yard, Imps in the yard. Yeah, this is so annoying. All right, let's just uh, preordain. I'm gonna get a black source with this first. Now we shuffle first uh, because there's a chance we might want to keep both cards on top. So we don't want to shuffle away either of those cards. I do want the Edict. I think I'll take the uh, fourth land as well. So we'll top and top. So that's exactly why we chose not to uh, shuffle later. So we get the advantage of thinning our deck, setting up our land drops, and also keeping both cards on top. Everything works well. Now, curse means we might be able to mill pretty quickly. Forest, hollow, forest. Okay, so he, he just kept all of that. So now we just leave up. Okay, we play this so that we have teachings up. But we also have up Diabolic Edict and uh, Accumulated Knowledge. So we're going to let the first one resolve. Then when he goes to cast the second one, we're going to... Diabolic Edict. Then I think next turn we're just Chainer's Edict and leaving up AK. So there's that. And he's going to kill his graveyard except for Viscera Dragger, I think. Oh, he's just going to unearth. Alright, well I'm going to kill the... I'll take the three. For now I'm going to kill the Gurmuk Angler. So now I can actually leave up Teachings. Or I can Preordain and Curse him. Depends if I draw a land, because then if I draw a land, I can teachings into a counter and then play curse with a counter. As it stands right now, I'm not incredibly terrified of what he can play next. So I think I'm going to preordain and play curse of the bloody tome and try and try and do something there. This figure seems okay. Um, I mean, maybe it's not that good. It doesn't do a ton. It might be useful in shrinking a guy at some point. Talisman, on the other hand, I think our mana is going to be pretty tied up for a while. So even though it adds a mana eventually, I'm not too interested in paying the initial three. I don't think it's a very close decision. You could, you could certainly make an argument for keeping the talisman. Drawing the dispel was really bad for us. Dispel is not going to hit basically anything in his deck. Okay, those were two good things to hit. I don't think he's playing Tortured Existence. I think he's just a dredge deck. So that could be helpful for us. Now we get to Chainer's Edict, the Sultai Scavenger. Ooh, and we also get to Knight's Whisper, which I think I'll gladly do. And he only has Stinkweed Imp in the yard. 
Um, yeah, we just edict. Even though it makes our tragic slip worse, we're just going to have to live with it. I'd rather not take the damage. We can teachings for a, another diabolic edict later and uh, and set up the tragic slip. I think we're doing okay right now. We are enabling every dredge creature ever. Ooh, that's not good. But that's going to turn on our tragic slip, though. Oh, no, it's not. It exiles. Okay. So we don't really know anything about what he's got. He's, he might just drag her us. We're definitely taking hits from that. And again, the curse just fuels his fire, which kind of sucks. All right, I'm going to leave that alive. The reason I'm going to leave it alive is I might get a chance to tragic slip afterwards. And I could AK. I think I'm going to leave all of my options open. I'm going to leave up deprive, backup, and all that. So if he goes dragger, what I can do is disfigure and tragic slip while leaving up deprive and AK. That seems pretty solid. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess we let that live. I'll take the one, and we'll see what he does after that. Oh, I can get a crypt incursion. Oh my word. That'll be pretty good. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, he didn't activate that at all. So yeah, let's just get a crypt incursion. Then on his upkeep, we can starch him. That seems like the best option to me. Uh, I could justice here, but... I think I'll still leave up the deprive. Yeah, let's just pass. Probably, And then now we'll Crypt Incursion before he can unearth. We're going to gain a lot of life here. So I think that'll basically just end the game. Yeah. That is going to be really hard to come back from. Okay, our deck is actually pretty good against him. And it's another 2-2. Two -two. We have Evan Carr's Justice, so I think I'll let that live. It's not a ton that really scares me at this point. So I'll draw a card. Now I can draw two. Do I want to take potentially three next turn? I think it's okay. Let's just draw two first. We're doing well. And now I also have up that disfigured tragic slip combo. I think I think we'll just leave up deprive disfigure tragic slip. I think it's actually fine. So here I'm actually going to go for the disfigure on the putrid imp. I don't need to be killing stuff because I'm at such a high life total, but as long as we're spending mana, I think we're we're okay. Yeah, so we have the tragic slip here. So whatever this is, we can we can let it resolve. Then go for the slip. We have counter magic backup. This this game is going very well. I mean, extremely well. Now I could leave up. I think I'm just gonna play talisman. Leave up my counter magic, and then we can start chaining teachings. And this game is this game is already basically over, but. It's going to be super locked up after I untap here. Mm -hmm. And then the talisman negates the uh, stinkweed imp pressure, so that's fantastic as well. I'll just counter this if it's a fatty. If it dies to justice, then probably won't counter it. Yeah, I think we just throw it. We have more counters coming. I think we're fine here. This game's really not going to get away from us. I can't I can't think of any reason that it would. So we just pass, and then we, we get our teachings chain going. We're almost 3, 6, 7, 8. We're almost to the point that we can uh, justice with counterspell backup, and that's going to be pretty insane also. 
But it's going to be the Curse of the Bloody Tome that gets him, not the Evancar's Justice. What is this? Another one of those. Do I have a Doom Blade in the deck? I think I might. Um, I'll just deprive this. Oh, hang on a second. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the mana from the Radiant Fountain, then I'll deprive the... I do have a Doom Blade. Um, yeah, so I'll actually just let that resolve, because I have a Doom Blade, which I can tutor up next turn. And we just pass, right? Three, six, yeah, that that's enough. We just pass. We can Knight's Whisper later. Well, good to know I have that Doom Blade in there. And this dispel's pretty dead. Otherwise, so even though I'm not going to get to Doom Blade and leave up counter magic this turn, I think we'll be okay. I think I'll actually just take the five now and then Doom Blade him on his end step. Yeah, just to be extra safe. I knew that he drew the salvage for turn, but just to be extra safe, I'm going to go ahead and and do it like this. Yeah, let's just get this guy out of here. Using our mana very efficiently. I mean, we're casting way more spells than the opponent. That is the one thing that happens to these Delve decks, is they can start off very fast. And then what happens after that is they start to run out of steam. So we definitely want our own Gurmog Anglers. I'm not sure Spreading Seas does anything. I don't know that I want another Doomblade effect. But he's got, what, he's got Wild Mongrel, so that doesn't... We're not very good against that. Doomblade's not good against that. I think Justice overall is not that good. Disfigure about the same, but we can at least win some battles with other anglers. Macabre can hit an unearth a couple unearth creatures. Capsize can hit everything, but it's a little bit late gamey. Kinda do need to manage the board. I'm not sure that Macabre's gonna be very good for us. It's an annoying matchup. Crypt Incursion really was the thing that kind of kind of starched him there. Spreading Seas. Maybe cut him off of green? Is that possible? Does that do anything? Spreading Seas doesn't seem like it does enough. So that means our choices are capsize for the late game. Which I actually kind of like. That's going to keep Gurmog Angle. It's going to make it hard for him to cast those. Eventually, if we can get there will be good. The, the trick is getting there. Absolutely. And do we want any fairy macabs? And if so, what do we replace? It's really only good against the unearth creep. I guess it's good against Stinkweed Imp too. Yeah, let's try and play a pair of those. And what I'll do, I think, is cut maybe a deprive on the draw. Let's try one. I don't want to have multiples around. This is like a zero spell. Yeah, let's try this. We're up one game, which is very, uh, very, uh, it's a positive thing for us. It's a, it's a positive sign because even though we're going to be on the draw this game, we were already on a draw, on the draw, and we're able to win. And this time our deck is a little better against him. And even if we don't win this game, we'll be on the play for game three. Now, he's going to have a lot of hand disruption and annoying stuff like that. And that's certainly something that can turn the tide of this match. But I feel great about how the first game went. I honestly couldn't be much happier. And it's not like I've had a ton of hours with this deck recently. It's uh, I'm really just flying by the seat of my pants, I believe the saying goes. Now we're waiting for him. I should probably make sure that uh, we're still on. We're still recording. Yep, looks like everything's good. So we are just kind of waiting here, which is good because a delve deck can take a lot of time and take eat up a lot of decision-making space in your brain. 
So there is a chance this match goes long. I mean, it's very reasonable to to predict that this game might go a pretty long time, making game three a potential decider merely by time on the clock, not by any sort of board state or sequence of draws or any type of strategic decision making in game aside from time management. So we're still waiting on him. I imagine he is uh, not just conceding the whole match. I would have to imagine that there's just uh, something going on either with his connection or he's a little distracted or something with uh, you know something going on wherever he's at. I've played a similar Golgari dredge list in standard popper way back when, back when those sets were new. Cons of Tarkir, I guess it was Fate Reforged around that era. And that's, that seemed to be a very good deck when I played it. I remember just sweeping opponents up. My, yeah, the opponents disconnected, guys, so I apologize, but there is a chance that this match ends up being null and void from here on out. I hope uh, just watching game one, you guys have gotten a reasonable sense regarding how well this deck plays how smoothly everything flows and how we transition from each stage of the game almost seamlessly I mean, how much damage do we really take from the opponent how much pressure were we ever under we kept the board clear of any relevant threat we jacked our life total up to the gills and we just continued to disrupt everything he wanted to do. And not only that, the things he was trying to do weren't all that important or threatening to begin with. I mean, it was a wash. That first game was a trouncing. And those are the kind of things that happen when you play teachings and you have a strong list and you, you can pilot it with a degree of competence. I'm not saying I'm a master of the deck or anything like that, and I'm sure I made some mistakes because I was just flying through the turns and flying through the decisions, basically just kind of going off of instinct. But if you do have, and I'm talking a strong list, you're really considering your mana curve, you're playing a lot of one mana spells that work well, a lot of two mana spells that work well. You're not making the deck clunkier than it needs to be. It's, I mean, being cute, we were all guilty of it at times. Playing pet cards and stuff. But there's a lot of decks and deck lists out there that are just too overblown with clunky, cute, low impact, three mana and above spells and creatures and that's something that I don't think this teachings list we're playing today has much of if at all so anyway getting off on a tangent there if you if the stars align and you play reasonably well and you have a strong list these are the kind of things you can do with teachings you just have these complete blowout games where you're never in danger they never really have a chance and you're doing multiple things a turn while they're kind of just sitting there. It's really something. I mean, you, if you focus on how these games play out, you see a clear disparity in mana efficiency, s the snowball effect, which AJ Soccer wrote about so, so expertly. All of these theoretical things manifest themselves in these actual matches when you have... A strong foundation in terms of your deck selection, your decision making, your understanding of the dynamics of the game. You can just blow people away like we just did. Now, I don't think our opponent's coming back, so this is just a bunch of me rambling. You can definitely feel free to skip this portion of the video and go straight to the next round. But I do think it's important to include this video because um, 
just as a demonstration of what teachings can do to opposing strategies, particularly in game one. I don't even know if it's particularly in game one, but particularly creature decks that are very linear and play on kind of a predictable axis. Had his dredge deck been a tortured existence deck that now has a ton of added utility, the graveyard becomes a toolbox, he's got recursion, he's got instant speed tricks he can he can employ with madness and tortured existence activations. He's got synergies between cards like Carrion Feeder and, and other things that want to die and go to the graveyard. If he was playing something like that, this match would be much trickier, much harder to navigate. But when the fundamental plan that he's using is fill up my graveyard and then play a big fatty using the graveyard as food for for that fatty, it's it's much easier to interact with and to nullify when we've got so many potent, cheap, efficient, tried and true control elements within this teachings deck. So yeah, that's basically it. I mean, he might come back at this point, but it's not looking like he will. I do believe that if he's disconnected for 10 minutes or more, that will be it. I do want to confirm that it is indeed his connection and not mine. And I believe that is the case. I think we're still basically sitting pretty here. So... Yeah, it's looking like we're okay and he's the one just his time is kind of dwindling. I think it's I think he disconnected officially around 16 minutes on his clock. So I think by the time it gets to 6 minutes that will be all. So I suppose we could take some time to look at our deck list since we're not really doing anything else <laughs> at the moment. And uh, this is kind of what I mean by mana efficiency. Obviously, the four preordained play a huge role in that. This isn't an, uh, an MVP, right? Not even an MVP. It's just a key player in all stages of the game. It's great early for hitting your land drops or hitting a key removal spell. A key removal spell. And what I mean by that is early in the game, when they're laying threats down, you need to find that removal and you need to keep their board position to a minimal threat level. So any removal you're using early, it's not just playing uh, it's not just playing by the numbers. It's not just going through the motions. You are employing an integral facet of our strategy which is to survive stage one. And the biggest thing about surviving stage one is not to let them snowball their advantages. One creature threat quickly becomes two, quickly becomes three, quickly becomes four. The more of an advantage they have, the harder it is for us to nullify that advantage as time goes on, and the easier it is for them to amplify their advantage as time goes on. So any early removal you play is not just going through the motions. It is a key part of what this deck needs to do. So preordain finds you. Okay, we won. <laughs> Here endeth the lesson. We're back, bros. It's round number two. Sorry, guys, about what happened last round. But we're just going to keep going here. We're on the play. We kept this hand. This hand looks good as long as the opponent is aggressive. He's got fairies and stuff, so he's aggressive. And that means he's Delver, and I think that will be good for us. And as usual, you want to kill things with your kill spells. So here's a preordain. Uh, he kept seven, right? I don't even know. He's too busy talking. Yeah, he kept, and now... He topped and topped. We're going to kill the Delver as well. You just never really want them to get going. So if we have this type of tempo advantage, we really want to capitalize on it. Now, he could have days, but as usual, you want to play against what they do have and not what they might have. Now, that's not a, a rule to 
live by 100% of the time every single decision you make, but it's uh, it's a decent thing to, to consider and to think about. So he's very close to Spire Gollum, but this Chainer's Edict is not going to get better if he has the Spire Gollum. So I think I'm just going to play it. It looks like he might have a Vapor Snag or Force Spike, but I'm still going to make this play. We are missing lands, which is, is basically a death sentence against Delver. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens. I mean, Crypt Incursion is going to buy us some time. So, yeah, let's just AK now. There's not a lot he can do to punish it. I mean, he could daze, but look, we have two more AKs. So him count countering this first one is uh, going to be rough. So he goes with the Sprite. Now he's going to hit us with Ninja, which is going to make things really, really bad for us. Uh, missing those land drops was a huge factor of that. So... I mean, he couldn't wait to get the ninja down. He he played the spell stutter sprite on my main phase, which is not smart because I could have done something tricksy and set a stop on my second main, played a swamp, and killed the sprite. So there's that. We really can't sit around and do nothing here because he's hitting us with ninja, so we have to try and draw some cards with Knight's Whisper. Uh, actually, that seems wrong. I think I should have just gone with AK. But because AK draws us two here also. So now maybe we can do something. We'll have Counterspell and Dispel back up. Yeah, we might be okay. I mean, getting hit with Ninja multiple times is never good. And like I said, it's missing land drops is kind of a death sentence. So we might already be too far gone. Especially now that he's got a second Ninja. That's going to make things very tough for us. He's drawing all kinds of extra cards. Um, we could get into a good situation here. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. So now he has another miscreant, or is it a Delver? Oh. Oh, no. Well, I could just go for gain nine. I don't think that's good enough. I think we have to play... Yeah, our, our hand is just so crap right now. We have too many draw spells not enough lands so there's a tragic slip that does nothing for us I think I'm gonna pitch AK number four because we're just not gonna be in a position to cast it so it's turn seven we've only hit um, sheesh we've only hit uh, four lands yeah this this went south really quickly and that's why Delver is such a um, such a force in the metagame and has been since forever because it can it can really put you under so this is probably getting countered oh he let me draw three cards which is funny because I still didn't find enough to really do anything um, yeah, we have we have some things we can do. So he may throw in he may throw in the spell stutter sprite, but basically we want, to, we want a chainer's edict and tragic slip and try and fight over the sprite. Probably won't happen. Probably just lose this game. But uh, afterwards, I think we might be okay. So he does sacrifice. So now I gotta go for a tragic slip, and we're probably gonna lose this counter fight because. Can you guys answer why? We missed those lands early on, and it was a death sentence. So maybe I was better off casting AKs instead of casting Chainer's Edicts. But had I had I not cast the Chainer's Edicts, uh, he would have hit me with Ninja much sooner, and our problem would have been just as bad, only earlier. So it's hard to say. Anyway, this game's over. 3, 6, 9, 12. I guess we could possibly gain 12 here stay alive for one turn that's possible we do have counterspell and dispel jeez jeez yep it's funny how I play against Delver on camera and say how it's a good matchup and then seemingly always lose and then whenever I play against it off camera 
I, I wouldn't say I always beat it off camera. It's it's closer than maybe I sh I have I have admitted. So I guess we just go for the three six nine twelve. Puts me to thirteen. I live for one more turn. Maybe that's not good enough. Is there any way I conceivably win from this spot? I don't know. I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna play the land. I'm just gonna crypt incursion. And hope to draw like Heaven Car's Justice or something. Um, also, I can dispel whatever his counter is, and then I can. Oh, he has a dispel too. All right, so we actually get to counter his spell stutter sprite and gain an additional three life off of it. Unless he has days, which is very much a possibility. But this puts us up to 16. Oh, good lord. Oh, no, it worked. But this is still, we have one turn to do anything. I mean, I could go for Chainer's Edict, but I don't even think that... Wow. So now it has to be Evan Cars, and he's definitely got more counters. Those were the only counters we saw all game, and he's drawn so many extra cards, there's just no way we're getting out of this. Especially all the preordains and ponders and manipulations. This is scary. This is the scariest I've seen Delver be in a while. Alright, let's just go for it. Basically have to hit Justice. I don't think Teachings does it. Yeah, we're not going to get there. He's going to counter it anyway. Not good enough. GG. Alright, so that was ugly. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves. I kind of was talking mess. Saying we had a good matchup and here we are about to get smoked, huh? I'm actually interested in playing these as, as a 2-2 flyer. I think they actually would be better than angler or counter spell. So let's try that. And yeah, as you notice, we actually don't play counter spells after board except for dispel. I think that is the way to go. I think what you do is treat this more like an aggro deck. You play real treat Delver more like an aggro deck rather. And you play cheap removal as much as you can, instant speed, one mana. You fight them on their upkeep. That's not a point in time that they really want to fight you. And that's how you beat them. So this is a strong hand. No mulligan from him. Delver tends to mulligan a little more often than we're seeing from the opponent. But And it's very important. I mean, you really want these one mana answers to Delver. Because look how frequently they have that turn one Delver. It can snowball the game. Like The game can careen out of control against you. Uh, quite a bit so if he's just preordaining that's fine I was gonna say if he plays another Delver definitely edict but yeah so he found his island oh he does have another Delver so we will edict the question is do we also want to preordain I think yes because a it gets us around days and B it lets us do more with our mana we don't really need to we don't really need to um, play the Dismal Backwater this turn. I'll keep the Knight's Whisper, but I don't want the land. And now he may play a Stormbound Geist or a Spire Golem. Ooh, that's bad for us. So... I think this turn we just threaten AK on his end step. I don't want to just walk into Spell Stutter Sprite. This is the other way you can get killed by Delver. You know how the first way we were screwed? The next way is to be flooded. So let's see if that happens to us. Uh, he probably has Ninja. Not this time. Should I AK in response? No, because I want it to look like I still have counter magic. Plus it lets him know what perfectly what he wants with Ponder. He chose not to shuffle. 
Okay, so let's see if he does something with this. Another thing is we're not playing serrated arrows, and serrated arrows is a really good answer to... Alright, so I'm going to play Knight's Whisper, and then if he sprites it, I'm going to play Fairy Macabre. Off of uh, Radiant Fountain. Uh, do I still play Fairy Macabre? I don't think so. Just walk into uh that's okay. I don't want to just walk into a removal spell. Or sorry, a counter spell. And fairy and uh fairy miscreant is not a ton of pressure, so Okay, he's got a really weird hand. I think I'll bait with curse now. And then go for the macabre. Wow. Okay, so we're not going for it. We're real close to justice with buyback. That's an interesting one. And that might work if he ninjas me. He's not going to. He's just sitting on all types of counters. Alright, this is a great draw. Because it's going to force him to make a move. And if he doesn't, he doesn't, but this is going to be a pretty good draw. Um, I think we just get a removal spell. We don't have much else. Maybe like a disfigure or something. I'm trying to bluff having anything else to do. He probably has dispel, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, let's just go with the disfigure. I think we'll play it now. I think it's likely that he has Dispel, so... Oh, he's got Spell Stutter Sprite. So now I can Justice with Buyback. Two, four, yeah, let's go for it. And that's a pretty big hit if it resolves. If he has a one mana counter, we're, we might eat crap, so to speak. <laughs> but... He hasn't shown us anything remotely like that, so I think we just go for it and, uh, as you see, profit. Sure. Now we have Edict and Macabre. And this is how you, this is how you beat them a lot of times. I mean, obviously, he's missed lands. His deck doesn't want to hit a ton of lands, though, but you force them to play Sorcery Speed, and we're just we just have better things to do at Sorcery Speed. So now we're on the board. We just lay, you know, everything on the table. We get to untap with all this great flashback stuff. It's just really tough for him now. Okay, so he's going to blow that up. I guess we don't untap with all this great stuff, but whatever. And that makes my crypt incursion kind of garbage, but... Ooh, we get a beat down with Fairy Macabre. That's cool. Um, I don't even know if I want to let him spell stutter sprite ninja me, but I think for now we'll just uh we'll just chance it since it is a bit of pressure on him. And we haven't answered a ninja, so Wow. So he's just sitting on reactive counter magic. Very interesting. Let's just keep attacking here. Yeah, that relic actually hit us pretty hard. Relic doesn't usually hit us very hard, but just so happens our business spells were two of them were in the graveyard and one of them cares about his graveyard, so. Okay, so now he has the sprite. But it really won't matter. We'll get to untap with Fairy Macabre and do some damage. Yeah, he may have ninja, but it's probably fine. So long as we don't draw a preordain <laughs> and just make his spell stutter sprite awesome. OK, 
Okay, he's got nothing to do. He's going to actually discard. He discarded a gush. I'm just going to pass the turn. I think the long game should favor us, though. He does have a bunch of spells. He did not use the sprite. I'm just going to take the block. And I'll be happy with that. Or, you know, reasonably so. Delver of Secrets. Relic of Progenitus. And he's leaving up a counter for Evancar's Justice. We have another Fairy Macabre. So, do I want to just use up my first Justice? I could cast it for four, and that gives me another Macabre. Actually, make him counter the macabre I guess and then I can cast justice with buyback I guess you could do it either way alright cool he did not use the relic I don't imagine he has any snaps or anything now he can't attack me alright Life is looking good. I'm not going to attack back. I would really love another Teachings or Knight's Whisper. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to attack back. This game is going kind of weird. He's still not using Relic. I think it's a mistake. I mean, I could have some kind of Delve thing that just lines up perfectly with my other stuff. He might be flooded now. Tragic Slip's an interesting one. I think we just hold on it. I mean, we're not in a bad spot, so just hold on everything. We have more mana, so we're going to be able to kind of get in there with, uh, you know, an exchange of permission and spells, so. So let's see what he does with that. Bottom, bottom. Alright, we obviously can block here. And will block. <laughs> can and will. So our only win cons are the the curse and then these Evan cars. Oh now you're using it. Oh now you're using it. Ooh, I like that. A little Doom Blade action. It's not using the spell stutter sprite yet. Okay, and we're happy with how this is proceeding. He's going to pitch, ooh, pitched a counter spell. He must have a lot of those. Again, I think the further the game goes, better off we probably are. Um, so now we're stopping him on his turn. We'll go with the tragic slip here. Make him do something about it. Counter spell. So do I want a doom blade? No, let's see if he throws a ninja into the mix. Okay, he does. So there's a decent chance we can kill this. And then if he counters it, we will be tapped out. He will be tapped out. And we can we can Evan cards, we can Crypt Incursion, we can do both. And he's going to counter it. Okay, so we get to Evan cards and Crypt Incursion if we want. This gains us 3, 6, only 9 life. That might not be good enough. It looks like he's holding on to Dispel, so... Maybe we'll just say no thanks to that. Three, six, nine... Yeah, not enough for me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into it. Sure. 
five cards, one is Spell Stutter Sprite. Okay. Definitely happy to try and throw this out there. Cool. So that instantly nullifies the uh, the miscreant attacks. It's looking like he should probably just do away with relic, but you know what? He actually has it as a as a hoser to crypt incursion. So had I tried to do it. We would have been in for a rude awakening. I can't imagine he's got a fourth ninja, or I guess only three. Oh, this is really annoying. So that's definitely going to connect. Yeah, this kind of sucks. Mm hmm. So what is this? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think I can. I think I have mana for two Evancar's justices. But if he has two counter spells, we really hate life. Four, seven, eight, thirteen, fourteen. He's played two counter spells, discarded a deprive. I think we have to go for it. I mean that's a lot of counter spells already. So for him to have two more, I mean if he has two more, we kind of deserve to lose. Not deserve to lose, but there's not a lot we can do to actually win, so he's going to be happy about this. Jeez. Yeah, what are we going to do? Hit all four counter spells and three ninjas. It's just not our day, guys. I mean, what are we going to do against that? It's not our day. Look how many, again, the flood, the flood. It's just not our day, baby. We don't have things like serrated arrows and mull drifter in this list. And those kind of things can do a world, can make a world of difference against Delver. So, And we can't even resolve this AK. It's really sad. Um, I think we just have to take our lumps here. I don't think he's going to let me get away with Crypt Incursion. So. I think we're just getting our asses beat. <laughs> I think that's what's happening. And it could be the case that this matchup is a little bit more skewed in their favor than I initially believed with the first whatever dozen matches I played. You just never know uh, fully with the small sample size. Things can drastically change over time. Okay. This is embarrassing. <laughs> well, again, I don't think there's much point in trying anything that's just blatantly not going to work, so... Let's go ahead and pass. We've drawn way too many lands. I mean, we can't use them. It would have been nice to hit a mystical teaching somewhere along the line, but the fact of the matter is he's probably been sitting on Dispel all game long. He may even have multiple copies. Now that he's seeing an extra card every turn, it's just way too hard to keep up. Okay. It's way too hard to keep up. Well, there's that teachings. I'm not even sure what that gets. But whatever it gets, we're going to try and do it on his upkeep. I mean, I guess we get multiple shots at... I guess we can't do disfigure. He can counter the first thing, which is kind of sad. Alright, before this even happens... Let's go with teachings. He's just going to outright dispel it. So now, let's go with another teachings. 
I think he's going to outright dispel it too. It's just too much counter magic for us to deal with. Um, I actually want a teachings for another teachings. I mean, we're not dead this turn, so let's at least get the teachings going. And maybe that's bad. I mean, I really don't know. I think I actually want to go Crypt Incursion here. Because then he has to blow the relic and I can keep my teachings around. And I think that's the only way I stay alive. So he's going to blow the relic. Alright. So now we're going to let him reveal. And we'll see what we want to do with our teachings from there. Because I think I'm actually going to cast the teachings now. Well, actually, we can let him draw, because if he had a counter to draw, he would have revealed it and flipped the Delver. But he didn't, so I guess I just get a Disfigure or a Doom Blade. And then we teachings up another thing. Wow, we're so low in life. Oh, no. He's actually got Stormbound Geist. Jeez. Yeah, we're done. Awful, awful for us. This has been just a complete beat down. And we are on the wrong end of it. So what can I possibly get? Maybe I get AK. He has to counter. Because we don't have a counter for Spell Stutter Sprite. So maybe I just have to draw as many cards as I can. And this is the first one, the first bunch. Try and draw two. He's gonna. He's gonna. Oh, he let me get it. Well, that's an interesting decision. So I guess I go for the. If this flips, do I lose? No. And that's my last teachings, right? So I can only go for an AK. Okay, so turn off auto yields. We're going to go for the disfigure on the ninja. I don't lose if... I am going to lose this game. I mean, I just don't have enough stuff to really... So now I go for teachings for to draw three and hope that the draw three does something for me. I hope I draw three instant speed removal spells that I can cast all right now. That would be sick. I have the dis. Ugh. All right, I'm out of here. I've seen enough. The I mean, he just ran so well. I'm not saying that Delver can't beat my deck. It clearly can. But that was a bit of an outlier. Props to him. He played great. He played great and uh, definitely kicked our ass. So I mean. He won fair and square. I just don't think that was the most typical uh, display of how the matchup works. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this. We're going to do one more, so please stay tuned. All right, guys. This is it. We're on the play. We're going to keep, hopefully, uh, redeem ourselves, retain our honor here. Opponent mulligans to six keeps, and do they top or bottom? They bottomed. Let's get some of this going. We may go for that turn two fetch into preordain, which is so common in this deck. Could be playing against Peregrine Drake. Yeah, don't get too excited, guys. I know it's your favorite. All right, if it's Peregrine Drake, we're not going to be happy. If it's, we're going to keep both. If it's, uh, is it Fiend? We are going to be happy. So. Our happiness is very much dependent on what happens next. Ponder kind of points a little bit, a little bit more towards is it fiend? And he shuffled. Did he find a land? See to the side nod. I don't know what that means. I actually don't know what that means. I think it still could be is it fiend? And he didn't shuffle. I'm just gonna land the curse while I can. 
I think it's better than playing Aqueduct or Pristine Talisman. This actually gets rid of the, the cards that he wanted on the top, too. So that will reveal some stuff. More lands. So he's looking for lands. And it looks like... Oh, no. He's Peregrine Drake. Oh, God. All right. Well, he did miss some lands, though. That could be the best thing uh, that happens for us. I think before I go ahead and do anything else to him, I'm gonna I'm just gonna get my mana set up. So I'll put the swamp back. Yep, he is definitely Peregrine Drake dot deck. That is scary. That is scary indeed. Okay, well we do have four fairy macabre. We have Gurmog Angler, we have Hydro Blast. So we have some sideboard stuff, but game one I'm don't love our chances. Trinket Mage. Okay, maybe he's not playing the combo, but he probably is. Why wouldn't he be? Let's be honest. Relic. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Trying to buy my butt some time here. Well... Chainer's Edict's not all the way dead. He knows about the swamp. I kind of don't want to show him the fountain yet. So Disfigure and Counterspell are both lovely. Uh, well, I don't know if they're both lovely. I think I'll top both. I'm going to keep Counterspell for now. I'm just going to throw the dead weight onto the mage. I'm going to leave up Counterspell, and I'm not going to throw my Edict out there just yet. I'll take some lumps for now. And uh, this is great. I don't think he has a main deck answer to curse. So if he just taps out, we might be happy. Might be happy. Right now, the Oracle is not a factor except for the fact that it makes our edicts terrible. I don't know if I should have kept the Disfigure. I'm just going to cast Chainer's Edict. And if he wants to sack his Relic, he's more than happy to. He's more than welcome to, I guess. Sure. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he's playing Drake or not. We're going to find out in due time. I mean, the Ponders kind of uh, imply that he is but you just never know. He might have some Galvanic Blasts or something. He's got Trinket Mage. Preordain, top, top. Flashback, okay. So maybe he's a little desperate here. Kind of what it's looking like. Uh, don't want to use that yet. Clock is ticking on this guy, that's for sure. Spell Stutter Sprite. Jeez. Okay, this is an interesting deck. The unknown is always very fearful. He's sitting on five mana and just like... Okay, he's just deciding if he wants to discard. Okay, well, we are going to be making that life back basically uh, in in no time flat, so... I don't think Burn is going to really do too bad, so long as he doesn't have Galvanic Blasts. Got Ninja, Trinket Mage, so he's kind of like a Delvery deck. I don't expect any Peregrine Drakes at all. Especially because he's gone through more than half of his deck. Um, yeah, this is fine. Let's see what he reveals. Like a bone splitter, a Silvok life staff. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't really care too much about a Silvok life staff. I think I'll go ahead and disfigure. If he has spell stutter, I may have to counter it. So, actually, two, three, four, five, six. I'll just justice him. I'll just justice him. 
and hope that um, Mold Drifter is not too bad for us, but this two for one is pretty nice. Cool. Plus, I mean, we're keeping his aggression down a ton, and now he has Mold Drifter with backup, which is annoying. Actually, what is this? Okay, why did he tap seven mana or six mana? I see. Okay, well he has no uh, no counter backup. Why don't you just see how to equip it? Might as well. Even though we don't give a damn about your life. Boom, boom. I guess I could have. Let's see, two, five. No, um, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Ah, I think I had mana to justice and leave up counter spell. That was stupid. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that was dumb. I just made a bad misplay. Doesn't look like he has a ton to deal with Gurmog Angler either, and he's he's liable to take out um, flame slashes. So I think Angler would be a good inclusion. Yeah, he's kind of a tempo-y Delver type deck. Sure. And we're at 20. He hasn't touched us. He has done no damage to us. Top, top. That's interesting. Not sure what that could mean, but in the meantime, let's get some counter spells. Yeah. So he may just jettison the relic. No, I guess not. Now we just pass. He may still jettison the relic. One, two, that's it for me. And he concedes. Okay, so four ninja, four sprite, four trinket mage, four seagate, flame slash, lightning bolt, counter spell, and some number of mold drifter, but it doesn't look like very many. Okay, that's hard to prepare for here. I mean, he looks pretty susceptible to Evan Carr's justice. Crypt incursion, I'm not loving. He's got relics. Chainer's Edict, not the best, but... I mean, if we just play some more removal, we might be okay. If we just kill all of his threats, basically. But we do want counters. I don't think cutting counters is necessarily the best play. We could cut Talisman. What if I cut Talisman, I bring an Angler... And one more removal spell. Just something real cheap. I mean, Hydro Blast is nice, but it's a little too specific in terms of being anti-Pyroblast technology. I want to try this, particularly on the draw, and see how that goes. I think he might be short on ways to deal with Angler. Cause he, he should cut a decent amount of burn, but if he has a lot of Pyroblast, we could be in trouble. No doubt about it. He's also kind of threat light, though. It's possible he boards into the combo, but I'm not seeing that being too likely. We'll keep this hand. It's not stellar against him, but it, there's, yeah, especially not against that. Um, I almost played the uh, the Demir Aqueduct there. He might also be playing Stone Rains. So it's a little risky to play the Aqueduct. I think I'm still going to do it. Uh, actually, it doesn't that cause me to discard? Yeah, because I go up to 8, 7, and then 8. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to discard and set myself up for a Stone Rain. So these are just going to be simple cantrips. Sure. He's playing Ponder and Preordain. He's very much a kind of tempo deck. All right, we're just going to do this. He's going to counter it, or he's going to kill it with Relic. Yep. Very close, neck and neck as far as time is concerned. So I think I'm still just going to forego pitching anything. We're going to once again cycle. He is yet to do anything. I would love to find a counter spell so that we don't just get mole drifted. I guess we have Mystical Teachings. That's not too bad. 
guess we'll leave that up since we're not going to do anything else. Sure. This kind of keeps him honest also because it, uh, maybe I just play, maybe I just get Dispel and then I try and curse him early. I mean, almost certainly going to Pyroblast me, but I think it's, I think we're forcing the action in that sense and he's only got five cards he has yet to pressure, so I'll go with the Dispel. He's going to nuke it. And then we can, act ooh, we actually can affect some change here. Yeah, this is going to bring us shields down, but it also means we don't have to discard to the uh, aqueduct. So we lose the counter war, but it's not so bad. We eat up two of his pyroblasts. That's pretty good. I mean, this game is no by no means decided just because we lost one of our four or five or six win conditions. Yeah, that's definitely good for him. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to act like it isn't. But I'm still okay with uh, how things are panning out. So just one for one this. We've got another dispel, so we're, we're looking pretty good. I need to auto yield to that because time is going to be a factor. Yeah, I'll let him have this. I can counter a uh, oh second really yeah that doesn't really concern me I don't think. Sure. So I think we'll just cast Vendetta. If he plays Spell Stutter Sprite, I'll play Counter Spell. He doesn't. So there you go. And we just pass. He doesn't have a lot of card draw, you know what I mean? Like extra cards. He's got Selection. But, I mean, unless he cashes in these relics, he doesn't really have... I should have cut Crypt Incursion. I don't know if I did. I'm going to let that resolve. I'm going to Chainer's Edict that. This one's kind of getting away from us. He's very threat dense. I guess I have to counter this now. Which is fine because I have Dispel for the Dispel or Third Pyroblast. Doesn't have either. We are winning on time. That's that's always good. Well, can't do anything with that angler just yet. I need one more land. He's down to three cards though. That would have been sick if we could somehow have done, made it work. But we can't. In fact, our justices are kind of dead too. I mean, they're not super, they're not all the way dead. But we'll see what happens. Another mole drifter, huh? That's what he was missing game one, that's for sure. So now I go for the justice, I have the dispel. It's kind of silly that it's a one for one, but that's okay. Just kill everything, do what we can. And I have the dispel. And next turn I may have the angler, I don't think so though, because oh, he didn't even use the relic. I'm just gonna have six. Three cards. Yep. Do I just go for the angler? I don't think so. Wow. This guy is relic of progenitus dot deck. Pretty sure I just go for justice first. I mean, what do I know? I really don't. Oh, and it worked. Interesting. 
He's down to two cards. He needs to start blowing some of these relics. Okay. That's pretty good for him. That seems like that's out of the sideboard. Man, we got nothing going on here. Boiler works. Probably not the smartest idea to go for Angler yet. I'm still going to thin my deck. Because I don't want any freaking lands left. Mm, this is okay because if he does spell stutter it, I get Gurmog Angler. It's fine. And I have a feeling he might not be able to deal with it, so... He does have five cards, but... There's a chance he cut all of his bolts and stuff. He's going to ninja me, though. I might just try and straight race him. Just have six. Yeah, this could be bad, but I think I'm just going to try and race, or I could just leave that back. And it's probably not the smartest idea to let him just have extra cards. Especially now that he has a blocker. The other thing is justice. If I cast it, ooh, doom blade. Ooh, doom blade. Um, let's just chill. I mean, I don't know that our situation is getting better, but so now he's like, do I spell stutter sprite? And the answer for him is no. Okay, I'll go for the block. So we brick walled him. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to win, but it is turning his clock upside down, which is kind of good. Three relics is overkill, especially having the main deck. I guess this is a build that's trying to prey on Peregrine Drake a little bit with so many relics and the tempo where you can uh, you can bolt the drake, you can counter some of their counters, you can uh, hit them early with ninjas and sprites and really pressure them if, if you get that tempo boost. Okay, there goes the relic. He's cashing in. I mean, he should be able to do some damage to me. I see out of trinket mages. That's three down. Wow, seven cards and nothing to. Are they lands? I don't understand what's happening. I wish I could draw something. How about Knight's Whisper? How about extra cards? Yeah, this this is a design flaw in the deck that you might be noticing is that our extra cards stem from our ability to tap into the graveyard, AK and mystical teachings. When he completely shuts down the graveyard with triple relic of progenitus to the face. Oh, that's just so he doesn't discard. Okay. Not even opting to uh, save a bolt to maybe kill my angler. I mean, it could be at this point worth it to attack into the angler and bolt it. Then you get to hit with the other creatures, but just pop your... He's like, I, I don't want to go down to less than two relics. So what do I do here? If I Doom Blade now, he can't have a second sprite to kill... Nah, no, this is fine. I'll just go for the uh, ninja if he flops, switches that in, swaps it in or whatever. I'll go for Doom Blade on it. Now if he has another ninja, it kind of sucks for me, but... If he has a counter, that might make my Evan Car's justice better. But we'll go for this. I mean, okay. So he's got two spell stutter sprites. So he's also probably got an answer to Evan Car's justice because we've only seen one counter spell out of him and he has five cards in hand, 17 cards left in the library. Yeah, seems about right. 
Um, we kind of can't afford to wait, though. Yeah, I should have auto-yielded. Well, we might be able to time him out next turn. Let's draw. Let's preordain. <laughs> Time is running a little short for us. Disfigure, huh? And I have four, five, six, seven, eight mana, so this would be the time to uh, to go for it, really. Yep, he's gonna have two counters and basically kill me. Or not. All right, I'll just wait. I mean, I am taking two in the air, but I think he's holding that counter spell for my logical last card, which he knows is Evan Carr's Justice. So, bottom, bottom. Maybe they were just lands. I mean, this does put me on five turns, but ooh, maybe it puts me on a little less than five turns, huh? More ninjas! Alright! Okay, well I need to find a counterspell fast, even though he's probably got more than one. I'm at six. And he's got a burn spell. Oh, I'm dead. So he kept his bolts in. GG. Alright, so... He's got plenty of time to beat me. We need to switch, flip the script a little bit here. Fairy Macabre, I think we want. We we took out Crypt Incursion, so that was kind of smart. Fairy Macabre blocks a lot of his deck. He does have Bolts, though. It's kind of tricky. We want Doom Blade. We might even want the Thursday. I think we're just not even fighting a Counterspell War with this guy, really. Just overwhelm his... We're on the play, so we overwhelm his ability to counter stuff. Maybe we'd play like that. Almost as if it's a straight aggro deck. I don't even know if we play Curse. He's got Pyroblast. Yeah, what are we going to do with the Curse? These might be good. Maybe something like that? Yeah, let's try it. Let's try and overwhelm his... Uh, his his ability to do stuff. <laughs> Let's try to overwhelm his ability to do stuff. And struck with our first mulligan choice basically of the whole shindig, the whole shebang. And we are going to have to mulligan. So let's do so. Oh lord. Well, this is not the way I wanted things to end. But it looks like I'm not going to have a say in the matter. He did mulligan as well, which is at least something we can keep. And we really don't want that so early, especially when we can't really cast it. So here goes nothing. I mean, he doesn't get off to a really quick start, so that is the one saving grace here. And we haven't really seen any uh, Stone Rains from him. We saw almost 100% of his deck, so I'm going to go ahead and play the Aqueduct now. Plus, we don't have to discard. Okay, so here we go. All right, no pressure yet. Sure. We're doing okay, but we really need to find business very fast. I'm talking Knight's Whisper type business. I'm talking... Mystical teachings type business. Talking second AK type business. Let's see what we do. Land. Okay. Well, that's exactly what I meant when I said <laughs> Knight's Whisper type business. I meant <laughs> seventh land, sixth land. Sure. So now the relics begin. I believe he has it on tap land, so... I'm just going to respond with this, boom, disfigure, F6, and click on Evolving Wilds. 
and we're still devoid of any real multiple card draw action at the moment. Sure. Two, three, four, five. So do I just play Diabolic Edict? I'm not sure. Yep. This is like, this deck is built to destroy us. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do the edict yet. And... Yeah, I'll just blow this guy away. We really don't want to see Ninja, and I know he's going to Mole Drifter me, but we have nothing going on. I mean, I just... I can't play around stuff when I have nothing. So we just play against what he has and uh, try and keep up. clearly going for Mole Drifter. I think the, the Preordain's better post Mole Drifter, because you draw two cards kind of blindly, and then, yeah, we have nothing. I mean, we're just going to get steamrolled for the next however long it takes. We have absolutely nothing. He has seven cards. Um, you draw two cards blindly, and then with that information, you can make the best Preordain possible. And you're deeper into your deck. If you preordain top top and play Mole Drifter, you're only two cards deep. If you Mole Drifter and then preordain, you're four or five cards deep. So, just saying. And I I swear I'm not trying to sound like a dick. I'm just I'm I'm not trying to sound like a dick. Okay, this might be good for us. I'm I'm literally just saying uh, what I think. That's all. So that's going to resolve, but I don't know what's going to happen after that. Probably nothing good. However, we could just start bashing and maybe maybe somehow get there. I mean, he can't attack into this. Oh, man. I'm going to start attacking him. I have nothing going on here. I mean, this is like the worst. We're probably going to get ranched, but we're probably going to get taken to the... Uh, Let's just see what happens if I just attack him endlessly with Angler. We're going to get taken out to Pasture. Boom! Eat fish. <laughs> That's not a dietary tip. He just took it. Oh boy. I mean, we're not going to time him out. We're not going to ever get in a position where we draw more cards because these relics got to shut down. So, main phase casting spell stutter sprite. Why would you do that? I don't know. Oh, does he have like a kill setup. Okay, while he casts that spell stutter sprite, oh, I thought he's gonna have a second one. Nine. Okay. There's really nothing I can do. I'm just these attacks probably aren't even good, but there's uh, there's really I don't think anything I can do. So he's already burning me. I mean he's got it set up. He might already have three uh, three bolts. Ooh. Well, let's try and bait. And see what happens if I do this. Jeez. 
Okay. Well, this is not a good day for Demir Teachings. I think we're dead. Yeah, we're dead. Not a good day for Demir Teachings. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, I don't have much else to say. I mean, we basically got our backsides handed to us by ninjas and spell stutter sprites all day long. So maybe that's something we need to think about more and need to prepare for it a little better. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, hopefully it didn't come across as too salty or douchey. I promise you I was not trying to sound like that. If it did, uh, oh well, I definitely will will look at that and try and shape up better for next time. I want to thank you very much for tuning in to this installment of That's Right, Dime a Dozen.